Hello there. Now I uh, turn the clock around back there. So <laughs> for everyone commenting last week, have no fear, you won't have to see it again. Although no promises if I will remember to turn it around next week. Anyways, fragrance and aroma have a very important part to play in how we perceive the flavor of things. This applies to food, to cocktails, to coffee, to really everything because your nose and your mouth are very interconnected. This means if you play around with the aromas and the fragrance that you add to whatever you're drinking or eating, you can alter or enhance the flavor of what you have. Today, I want to talk about a couple very, very simple techniques that can get you started into kind of exploring the way that aroma and flavor play together. These are techniques that I have used and practiced with in a lot of different barista competitions. Not all of them have made it to the final stages with me, but they've been at least things I've tried and things that I like to do in my everyday coffee making. This might seem a little bit excessive, but frankly, it adds a lot and more so than anything, it's a lot of fun. And I'm very much pro having fun. So we have three different categories today. Let's get started. Now, the first category we're gonna talk about the citrus, and this might be the most recognizable because citrus hold a lot of oil in their rind, and it's very easy to express that over whatever array of beverages you have. Usually citruses are pretty recognizable, uh, and they're a very nice balancing agent to beverages that are kind of cold and refreshing, or maybe a little bit sweeter, or, or if you just wanna add a little bit of complexity. Now these tend to be the most accessible, at least in the US, and kind of my favorites for, for starting out with playing around with what different citruses do what to drinks. So we have a pretty classic navel orange right here. I've got a lemon, I have a lime, and I also, this is the bane of my existence, but I do have a grapefruit as well. Now you'll notice that most of these have kind of chunks taken out of them already, and that's because I've already prepped uh, some peels off to the side. Now when adding citrus aromatics to a drink, really the biggest part you're gonna pay attention to is the rind and the peel. And I have a couple different options <laughs> right here. Now, if you'll notice, uh, these may look a little bit more dry. They're a little bit crinkly. Uh, they're not as vibrant as they are on the fruit. And that's because I peeled these about 15 minutes ago. And this kind of leads to my first point is that if you're using citrus rind, uh, make sure you do it fresh when you are ready to use it. These dry out very quickly uh, and it makes the oils pretty inaccessible. Now for demonstration today, we're gonna be using a lemon and we're also gonna be using a grapefruit, but this pretty much applies to all of them. When thinking about what sort of drinks you wanna pair citrus oils with, I usually begin in kind of the colder territory. I think citrus pairs really nicely with things that are very refreshing. And so a good place to start is with a pretty classic espresso soda. So for the sake of our drink build, we have a cup of ice. We're gonna be using LaCroix, just leaning into that citrusy side. But if you wanna use uh, tonic water or a mineral mineral water or just sparkling water, whatever you prefer, go for it. And again, this is all just kind of like a starting place. These are just ideas to get your brain flowing uh, and to kind of give you maybe a little bit of inspiration. Our espresso, we'll do this very carefully. Heaven knows I've had enough espresso tonics overflow on me. Now, we're gonna start off with our lemon. For the sake of avoiding waste, we're gonna do this all with one drink. But of course, uh, <laughs> if you wanna avoid overloading a drink, I recommend testing these out at different times with different drinks. You don't need to bombard this with citrus in order to enhance the aroma. Now for the starting technique, you're just gonna need a peeler. You're gonna wanna get a nice strip of the rind here. Don't dig in too deep. You don't really want the pith, but just a nice little strip like that will do you just fine. Now, the simplest way to express the oils that are in this outer section right here is simply gonna be to twist it. So grab on both ends and then twist. If you have any sort of foam or kind of head on your, on your espresso soda, pretty popular with espressos, that interaction often causes a little bit of foam on top. You'll even hear those citrus oils kind of hitting the top as they disperse over the drink. And you can be done just like that. Already you get a lot of brightness on the nose and it interacts really, really well with kind of the refreshingness of this drink. However, if you wanna add a little bit more, you can also go a more, slightly more direct route with this. Very simply, you take the side where all the oils are, rim the outside, and then kind of dunk that right in there. This is applying the oils even more directly just to the rim of your glass. And so it interacts very much in an aroma-like standpoint, but you do get a little bit more of that oil flavor as well. It's just nice. <laughs> it's all just very nice. Now, those are pretty basic. If you wanna get a little bit fancier, you can set some stuff on fire. Now, flaming citrus oils is a very fun technique, again, for just like 
adding oil to a drink. It has a lot of flair to it. It kind of caramelizes the oil. And it's what I actually used in this year's US Barista Championship. And I like to use grapefruits for this. Specifically, uh, because they're a lot larger, you're able to kind of get a larger chunk to manipulate uh, and express the oils out of. Additionally, grapefruits tend to be very juicy. They have a lot of oils there. They're easy to release. It's just an easier citrus to start with, whereas lemons or limes, a little bit trickier to work with. Now, instead of getting a peel, I recommend you get a knife or a paring knife and you kind of want to carve out a chunk of this. I've already carved out a chunk on this side and what I want you to note is that we haven't dug down into the meat of the fruit. We want a nice circular section here, but you really only want like, like the peel here. You can get the pith, that's totally fine. We want something thick that we can grab onto, but we don't want a lot of juice. This might take a little practice, but I recommend just kind of digging in, just kind of working your knife in a circle using caution. Again, as you can see, the meat of the fruit is right down here, but we haven't dug into that yet. We just have a nice, nice thick piece of peel right here. Now, we have a lighter. Essentially, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be holding the lighter open right atop our drink here, pretty close. And then we're gonna be grabbing and pinching this very quickly. This is gonna push out all of those oils right along this line, especially. And you wanna get pretty close to the flame with this. If you're, if you're close enough, you'll get kind of this fun burst of fire that adds a lot of flair and it just means it's worked. It's a nice kind of metric for have I properly expressed my oils, which is uh, quite the sentence. Anyways, watch. Again, a lot of practice on that, but that is kind of the ideal mode here. Might be tricky to see on camera, but you can see there's a, there's a little bit of scorching that's happened on the top of this, but you can see a lot of those citrus oils on this kind of edge here that we pushed out. It smells good. It just tastes really, really good. Grapefruit especially, I think is a much sweeter citrus. I think we also perceive it in, in kind of aroma to be a bit sweeter than like lemon or lime or something that's like straight acidity. Uh, and so grapefruit on top of drinks is very lovely. Now again, this drink itself is a little bit more rudimentary. This is just like an espresso soda. So you can get as fun or creative as you want with this, but those are a few methods with citrus that are pretty approachable. Let's put these to the side. Let's talk about smoke. Now adding smoke to drinks and cocktails is very, very popular. However, it usually requires a bit of equipment, be it a smoking gun or anything else. But there are a few easy ways to do it at home. Now starting off, the easiest way to uh, create smoke <laughs> for your drinks uh, is to smoke something or set something on fire. Now I have some herbs here that I really like. I think both of these kind of generally go well with coffee drinks, but there are many options. Again, play around with your ingredients as you see fit. However, what I have here is I have thyme and I also have rosemary. Rosemary especially is kind of a favorite um, um, for additions on coffee drinks. Now, as I mentioned before, with citruses pairing really, really well with more refreshing, colder drinks, I do think these herbs and smoke pair well with warmer drinks. Think more like summer versus winter. So today for demonstration, we're gonna be making a white chocolate mocha. This is a drink that is very rich. It is very sweet. Um, it is usually more of a winter drink. And by adding some smoke and some kind of herbaceousness to it, it balances it out. It makes it a bit more complex than just your standard white mocha. Now, a couple things you'll need for this. Um, I do recommend having a little wooden cutting board of some type uh, to do this on. This is from Ikea. This was like $2, it works really well. You will, of course, need fire of some type. I have my little trusty lighter here. Uh, this works great for me. And then you will want a cup that has kind of a, a wider opening to it. So on our espresso soda, that glass was very, very tall and narrow. This one is a little bit shallower, but it has a much wider opening and that's gonna be important for encasing uh, our smoking herb. Again, I'm just full of <laughs> interesting sentences today. So start with our rosemary. We are just gonna essentially set this on fire. Now, rosemary is not like super flammable, so you don't have to be too concerned with creating a fire hazard for yourself. But again, use caution, um, proceed with practical fire safety. So do this by a sink if you're worried about yourself. But essentially, we're gonna kind of flame all of this. You're gonna start to see the ends of the rosemary light up and begin to smoke. Once there is a good amount of smoke coming off of this, we're gonna set it down then we're gonna cover it up. So let's do just that. Okay, just gave it a little extra juice there at the end because my lighter is, <laughs> is pooping out on me a little bit. Anyways, we cover this up quickly. And so now all of that smoke that is coming off of the rosemary is gathering and kind of marinating in this cup. Now I recommend leaving this for a couple minutes. So um, while we do that, I'm gonna go steam up some milk. I have our espresso and our syrup set on the side and I'll be right back. Okay, 
I'm back. All of our smoke has gathered nicely in this cup and uh, if you stick your nose in it, you will really notice it. Uh, rosemary smoke is very, very fragrant. Um, it's just, it's lovely. It's a little bit campfire-y without being too campfire forward. Um, this is gonna pair very nicely with this drink. So you can set your, your scorched rosemary aside. I'm gonna reach into my drawer of tiny spoons and then we just build our drink in here like normal. White chocolate, espresso, finally some milk. Now this on its own is very lovely. While it doesn't look necessarily any different, you do get a lot of that smokiness on the nose. It's kind of encased all in this drink now, both in the drink and then also in the glass. And it's just, it's a lovely bit of complexity that takes this from a pretty standard drink into something a little bit more tasty. However, if you wanna add even more visual flair, there is one other way you can do this that doesn't require kind of marinating your glass in smoke. So once more, we're gonna take our sprig of rosemary, we're also gonna take our lighter. For this, I do recommend a longer piece of rosemary. The other one was pretty short, so we could fit it under a glass, but you can go a little bit bigger here. We're gonna do essentially the same thing. We're gonna smoke all of this and get it started, and then we're just gonna rest it on top. This method is gonna give you a good bit more smoke than just the glass will, because this is gonna be a lot more direct. It's gonna be a lot closer to your nose. You will have kind of the obstacle <laughs> of drinking around your rosemary, but if you're up for it, this is a technique that makes it look really nice and also adds even more than just smoke the glass. So once more, let me get my lighter, which is <laughs> really doing its best here. Let's get the smoking. All right, I'm just kind of set it on top there and it might be a little bit difficult to see, but I can smell and also see the smoke coming off of this. Now it won't smoke for very long. This will go out pretty fast, but it will linger for a good bit what you've created. This is so embarrassing <laughs> about my lighter. This has served me well for a very long time and it is unfortunately seemingly at the end of its life. And yes, I, uh, I recently refilled it with butane, so I don't think that is the issue. Anyways, we now have a nice garnish. Let's sip again. Again, it's delicious. The smoke is a lot more direct. It's a little less subtle. Um, but again, it's a really nice addition. It looks good, it's easy to do. Okay, that's enough smoking. Let's move on to our final topic, which is florals. Now florals are kind of the final aromatic we're gonna talk about today. This is this could cover a whole lot of things, but I'm gonna talk about two specifically that I like to use in coffee drinks and that have been main ingredients in a lot of past signature beverages. In no particular order, two of the floral aromatics that I think pair really, really well with coffee in general are gonna be orange blossom water and then also rose water. You see rose as kind of an ingredient in a lot of signature drinks at cafes, but you can kind of take it out of the ingredient portion and kind of just add it to the aromatic if you're looking for something a little bit simpler. Rose pairs with a lot of drinks, and additionally, florals, I think, pair with a lot of temperatures as well. With these last two methods, I've kind of given you like temperature recommendations for when to use which thing, but with florals, you can kind of go ham. A lot of flexibility here. These are very easy to use. Again, these are kind of my preferred brand of both of these two ingredients. You can find these pretty easily um, at most like Middle Eastern markets. And all you need to use them is a little spritzing bottle. I have already loaded this up with rose water and so there you go. Now we of course are going to make a beverage with this today and for the sake of both simplicity and also just flavor pairing, we're gonna make a shaken vanilla latte. Vanilla and rose are a match made in heaven. So we're gonna garnish with our rose aromatics and it's gonna add quite a bit to what is otherwise maybe a little bit simpler drink. I have used <laughs> so much ice in the filming of these videos today. We are, we are almost out here. Okay, ice in the shaker. Just gonna add a little bit of vanilla syrup. It's gonna be a small drink so you don't need a ton. Our espresso, I chilled this so it's not gonna dilute the ice too much. And then milk. We're gonna keep this drink pretty small. We're gonna do closer to like a one to one ratio. So you only need a couple ounces. And now we shake. And we have a nice amount of good texture on top from the shaking. Now you could have it as is, would be very lovely, but we're gonna give it a good spritz of rose water. I'm gonna do two spritzes. The way I'm gonna do it is kind of at an angle. So it's gonna be kind of from a top down here. So we're gonna get across the surface of the drink, but also we're gonna kind of spray the side here where we're gonna be sipping from. I like two spritzes. I think that's usually a pretty proportionate amount. And then if you want to be ultra fancy, <laughs> I have a little dried rose here, which we can just set on top. Now we'll sip from where we sprayed. I love rose water. <laughs> 
just as an ingredient, as an aromatic, it is lovely. And again, there are only so many ways I can talk about how the aroma enhances this, but it's just, it's very nice. It's kind of a, a level up from what you would have otherwise. Now, again, these are three kind of introductory ways to get you thinking about adding aromatics and garnishes to your coffee drinks. These are pretty standard in the cocktail world, but I think if you take them over to coffee, you can have some really nice experiences. Now, play with these, explore with these, try out different things and let me know what works for you. Now, I'm gonna go take one of these and enjoy it. But in the meantime, my name is Morgan Drinks Coffee. You can find me here on YouTube once a week plus shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. I hope you all had a good time. I hope you have a good week. I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.